Hello all you uh, YouTube fans. Check this out. I'm August by the way. That's my trail name. And uh, when you hike the Appalachian Trail, that's what we go by. We go by trail names. Hence the term. Trail name. Now then, I'm going back to the trail in uh, spring of 2012. And what I'm going to do is another through hike. And a through hike is generally termed as hiking from Georgia to Maine or Maine to Georgia without getting off the trail. Now, the last time I did a through hike, that was 2005. And back then, the distance was uh, 2,172 miles. You see, uh, every year or so, the mileage changes because the people that maintain the trail sometimes during blowdowns and winters and so forth, they have to cut new paths. So it's been pretty much an, an accepted fact that every year the trail somehow gets longer. But I digress. What I'm going to do in 2012 is do what, in my opinion, has not been done before. I want to document a through hike in terms of like a documentary. What I have here is a uh, power shot from uh, Canon. And I bought this in 2007. And it's a pretty good camera, I must say. I mean, the, the camera's good, but I'm going to get it for the, uh, for the video. Okay? And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm pretty much going to videotape little snippets each day of a through hike. I want to try to, of course it's going to be uncut, but I want to try to make it as genuine as possible. What I don't want to do is narrate people, tell them what to say and do. You know what I'm saying. What I want to do is pretty much capture the moment as it moves. The way I have it in my head is I pretty much want to get at least three shots a day. You're looking at what? Maybe 10 to 30 seconds of uh, imagery. It, of course, it depends. Now, I showed you the camera. What we're going to use as far as memory is just your typical uh, your typical uh, SD memory chips. I have an 8 gig, a 4 gig, and two 2 gigs. And the way I'm going to do it is this. It's pretty ingenious, actually. I just figured this out. Of course, you can only get, for example, with a uh, with a two gig chip, I get 15 minutes worth of footage that I can record using the camera. So it won't take long to fill up these chips. However, what I've learned is you can take an old school iPod such as this, okay? And if you plug this iPod into a regular computer using one of these, you just typically plug this in here. Like so. Plug this into your computer and what happens is whether you have iTunes or not on the desktop of the computer itself you can click on to this symbol because a symbol will pop up. You click on it, the iPod symbol, you click on it and then this becomes a hard drive. You can literally you can save anything you want to from it. So the only thing I would have to do is pretty much plug this camera up. Actually I don't even have to do the camera part. I can put the chip in here, plug it into a computer swipe the uh, swipe the videos that's been saved to the SD chip onto the desktop of a computer and then plug in the iPod and then in turn swipe the information from the chip to the iPod. Now this particular iPod has a hundred and thirty gig hard drive. Now imagine that. My songs, videos, books, all that might take 30 gigs. So that's 100 gigs that I can actually use to transfer information as I hike the trail through it. And of course, when I get back, what I'll do is just simply, you know, snip everything together in, let's say, you know, like 10 minute videos, put it on YouTube, and uh, let the world see what's going on. So, um, like I said, I've never seen it done before. And that's something that I would like to give back to the community because I got to tell you. I've been on this trail since 1992, off and on, you know, with the military and so forth. And um, when I first got started in 92, it wasn't a whole lot of information people could actually access to know what's going on. So what I wanted to do was actually put something up there that people could actually use, something real. And since I've been on the trail for several years, what I plan to do is show you a lot of tricks, tricks of the trade, things that I've learned through my experience that I can pass on. And uh, the trail is pretty much timeless. It gets better every year. 
and I want to encourage other people to go so this is the best way to do it uh, so that's the plan that's the plan out here hey there me again I went over and uh, watched the video to uh, monitor my performance just pretty much see how the footage went out did I say what I wanted to say you know and that's why I'm back because I can do a few things a little better number one this is what an SD chip looks like okay now depending on what kind of media you're going to be using as far as cameras uh, that will determine what you're going to use but I will say 90 percent of the stuff out there today uses SD chips this is 4 gig by the way um, so that's that about I wanted to let you see exactly what that looked like the second part is I think I can do a little bit better to tell you as to why I'm actually doing this now when I went on the trail in 92 there were absolutely no minorities you know and when I use the term minority I'm referring to race as you can see I'm black there was no black people there there were no Asians there were nothing um, and the women were actually scarce as well it was pretty much a male dominated um, thing it, it was almost like a best kept secret um, how did I learn about the trail? Uh, when I was stationed at Fort Campbell, which is in um, um, Clarksville, Tennessee, I was at a gym and I was doing my thing and I was working out and I heard this other guy telling someone else about the Appalachian Trail. And I was saying to myself, wow, that sounds really nice, you know. And so um, after he's finished talking, I followed him a bit, you know, struck up a conversation. I was like, you know, tell me more about this Appalachian Trail. That sounds like something that I'd be interested in. He went on, you know, and he told me some things. And... Uh, at the end of the day, he pretty much told me to um, to write uh, Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, which is where the Appalachian Trail Conference headquarters is, and they'll send you information. And sure enough, this was back in 92, sure enough, uh, I gave them a phone call, and I told them that I was interested, and what they did was they sent me a, a letter, okay, with uh, all the people that through hike the trail with their phone numbers on it. And pretty much, if you wanted to contact them, if you had questions, you can literally contact them and they'll tell you everything you need to know. Well, I got the letter and I contacted only the women because I realized that men tend to embellish a bit. But the women will tell you straight facts and what's going on and they pretty much laid it out there, you know. And I was like, cool, wow, you know. So but anyway, that's how I learned about it. And then I went on the trail and I saw for myself how things work. And um, here it is. Uh, that was 92. This is 2012. 2000, you know, 20 years later. And I can still count on one hand how many minorities actually go on the trail. I mean, the Appalachian Trail is beautiful, and yet you really don't see too much. Now, don't get me wrong. I am speaking in terms of through hiking. Sometimes, you know, when you go through, you see the Boy Scouts out on their missions, and yeah, you see the Asian kid, the black kids, and this, that, and the other. And um, since the Appalachian Trail runs through most state parks on the East Coast, you do see family outings coming and goings every now and then. But as far as... Um, minorities hiking the trail through hiking it just does not exist you know I mean it's just the way it is like I can like I said I can count on my hand at any rate uh, I through hiked in 2005 and when I was there there was a there was a black woman her name was Vision Quest she hiked uh, you know we just met up on the trail as we were going forward and um, I wanted her to tell me about her experience you know being a, being a minority and such and she explained to me that yeah you know there ain't too many around but see uh, she used to go into towns a lot more often because part of her resupply was she would mail packages ahead. And when you do that, you got to go in towns more frequently to pick up your um, pick up the uh, supplies. And she would hitchhike into town, and she would tell me things about uh, how guys would throw beer cans at her, or um, or or you know like holler out some kind of racial slur. And I was like, wow, you know, now granted, that's something that I've never experienced personally, but then I have to take into account my size, who I am, my, the way I present myself and so forth. So maybe I just didn't get that. But at any rate, um, if anything, I want to put this out there just to just to show people that, hey, you know, it's not just a white thing. You know, anybody can get out there and do it. And it's, and it's really a good experience and it's something that even if you're not going to through hike, if you're not prepared to go 2,000 miles, you don't have to. But take like two weeks out. Take a vacation, hike the trail, and see what's out there, you know. So what I want to do is actually let people see it so they can actually see for themselves what it looks like and pretty much make an informed decision based on my, my experiences. And I'm showing you my experiences from a minority standpoint. And I'll be honest with you. A black guy trying to hitchhike down in uh, rural 
south it's it's very hard so granted there are some things that um drawbacks if you will but that's why i encourage hiking in groups you can go by yourself that's fine there's thousands of people that's going to congregate at the trail but at some point you know you got to be sociable you got to get out there and meet people and you do things in groups and i recommend you do things in groups especially when you're going into town so with me if i know that i'm going to hitchhike in town beforehand i'm going to be buddying up with people to figure out okay who's going so generally when we're throwing our throwing that thumb out there it's either two or more individuals by myself i'm not saying that it can't happen i've had had it i've had had people pick me up at times but it's very hard you know and and you don't want to put yourself in a situation where where it starts to rub you wrong you know where the experience starts to kill your spirit because you realize you know there's just like magnifying glass on you saying you are different you're not like them quit pretending see i don't want to i don't want you to go through that I want you to like you know keep an objective opinion, but he, but be open-minded. Know where you at, you know. Know what's expected and roll with it. So at any rate, I'm digressing again. I just wanted to bring that out there and let you see what's up with that. I'll keep you posted, and um, that's about it for now. Out here.